the other day I was listening to my buddies on the 11 Bang Bang Reload show. If you don't know who they are, check them out. And the subject of spitting balls came up. Now, relax, it's not nearly as gross as it sounds. Now, I think most people that are familiar with this term have probably seen this in the Sharps Rifles TV show from the 90s, which looks a little something like this. Bite, pull, spit, tap, in. Bite, pull, spit, tap, in. Now, I might run a little fast and loose with the rules, but even I would not do that. Now, the scary thing about that in particular is they prime the pan, charge it, then they spit the ball down into the muzzle with their teeth. Now, I would not have my face anywhere near the muzzle of something that is charged with a ball and primed on half cock. That seems like a really bad deal to me. Even to me, it's a bad idea. But that's not to say that it wouldn't function. Now, before the safety rangers and FUD start yelling and hammering out angry comments, hear me out. I have tried this, but I skip the part where you prime it first. I don't care who you are, that seems like a bad idea. Now, I'm not an expert on the loadings in any military of firearms of that period, and I don't pretend to be. So I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm pretty sure it's not. But as far as being able to charge your musket and drop a loose fitting ball down the barrel and give it a tap, then prime it and fire, it does work and it works pretty well. Now there's a couple of things that you need to know about it. One, I've never tried it with a rifle, I've only tried it with smooth bores. Two, you need to use a ball that's undersized, but not too undersized. So in this particular video, I'm using my 20 gauge Fowler and I'm using a 6.0 round ball. Now I typically shoot this with when I'm shooting a round ball between 80 and 120 grains, 6.00 round ball and about a 20 thousandths patch. And it shoots really, really well. But if you're going to try the spitting the ball thing. By the way, I also don't recommend using your teeth. You need to use a ball that's undersized, but not too small. For example, once upon a time, I tried it with buckshot, but I think it was number four buck. And I poured 100 grains of powder in there and I took a handful, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 number four buck, put them right on top of the powder, rammed it, or at least, you know, seeded it. And I pulled the trigger and it just went woof. And all of those little balls just went and rolled on out of the barrel. So if there's not enough of a seal, at least with a big enough ball, all of that powder will just go right in between all of those little balls and just go right out of there and it won't work at all. Now, also, I do have to apologize for the audio here. The wind was howling. I know it sounds really lousy. So I think what I'll do is narrate over it. Hopefully that won't make it sound quite so bad. So here it is. Yeah, but I'd say that's damn good shooting for uh, without a patch. Without rifling, without a patch. Yeah, I'll take that shot any day. Here, let's let's get really let's get really scary about it. Oh, that's that sharp rifle. Drop the ball down the floor thing. So you just powdered, drew the ball down, and tapped the butt. Let's see, if, yeah, let's see if I can do it again.
see if I do it one more time. I have a habit of upsetting people on the interweb. It's kind of my thing. Seems fine. Yeah. So as you can see, it works and even works pretty well. And I'm shooting at 60 yards in that video and I could hit that thing pretty respectable, even in the howling wind that we had. Now, this brings me to the next point. And there will be people that say that this is completely dangerous and you should never do it because what'll happen is, is when you charge your musket and drop that ball down there and give it a tap and then raise it up, prime it and take aim, you might lean down or aim down and that ball will start to roll out of the barrel. And when you pull the trigger, that firearm will go off like a bomb. Kill everybody, melt your face, all of those things that everyone loves to say. Personally, I think that's complete bull, at least with firearms nowadays. Maybe it was a thing when you were using wrought iron barrels in the 1700s. Maybe that was the case. I don't see that happening at all. I've tested this kind of stuff. And the reason why I don't see it happening is if the ball is loose enough that it will roll up or down the barrel just with being level or off level, it's just going to go and shoot it off. I, I, I've done these tests before. That's what happens. Now, I know that usually someone's going to say, oh, no, man, I've seen it happen. You know, my cousin's uncle's brother's nephew's roommate used to do it, happened to him, all that stuff. So I don't think that's really an issue. But still, it's not something that you want to have happen. It's not good practice. You don't want to have your ball halfway down the barrel and your powder in there floating around. It's not good. You don't want to do that. But it is something you need to be aware of. So keep that in mind. Now. What I was trying to do here was just see what I could do with that particular musket and not use in a patch with that particular load. Anywhere between 80 and 120, 6 0 round ball and no patch. And I could shoot pretty consistent at 60 yards at that target, pretty good even in the wind. Now I can shoot that musket at 180 yards with a patched round ball and hit my target pretty consistent when the wind's not howling. I did try that without a patch and it didn't go well. I put six or eight shots at it, never did hit it. Each one was a little different. Uh, I'll spare you all of that. <clears throat> so having a tight seal and a good patch does help. Now I know that there's a lot of people that will say that a patched round ball and a smooth bore was not done in the 1700s. That's what people say. I don't really know if it's accurate or not. I've, I've heard a lot of sources that I do trust say that kind of stuff. Me personally, I'm not too concerned with making sure that it's period correct. I don't typically use paper cartridges in my brown best. I get people tell me all the time that, you know, they ask, well, what, what ball do you use in your brown best? I says, oh, I use a 735 ball. They go, well, that's not right. You're supposed to use a 69 caliber ball and a paper, paper cartridge. I don't care. My best shoots really good. And this is the way I like to load it. And it shoots well this way. About 100 grains of whatever I feel like. A round ball right on top of it. No patch. And then I use a 10 gauge overshot card, a 10 gauge overshot card for a shotgun. It fits that bore really nice. The ramrod uh, on the best is rounded and it pushes it down really easy, keeps it right there in the center, doesn't have a tendency to turn sideways or anything. It works great. That holds the ball down there and that works really well. I've never really bothered patching it because I have trouble finding a patch that big mostly. 
But the 10 gauge over, overshot card on top of the ball and the powder works great. It shoots really well that way. Uh, the reason why I didn't try that with the smooth bore is I don't have an overshot card that really fits the bore. A 20 gauge overshot card is a little small. It just kind of falls down the bore. So I need something a little bit bigger, I guess. But either way, I prefer to use a patch when I'm shooting that thing. But if you don't have a patch, you certainly can shoot it. And if it, the ball's not too undersized, it'll even work pretty well. So as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video. at his feet. Oh, man. Ah, right over his head. <laughs>